Shalom. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Hakodash. Double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who does lead and rule well. Salutations to all you hopeful like Akim, pushing out this word in sincerity and in truth throughout the four corners of the earth. And sincere Shalom to Akim and Akwaf, listening and learning, preparing yourselves here in these last days unto the entire household of faith, fighting this good fight of faith. I want to say Shalom. This is your brother, the choir from the DC camp. Come back at you with another lesson. And I'm going to title it, Happy is the man whom the Lord correctus or corrects. You know? Whom the Most High corrects, man. And, and, and I, you know, this was motivated. I was just talking to a brother, you know, and talking about, you know, you know, just talking about our situation, man. You know, Jake as a whole or, or in, your, in your, your personal life. And, you know, we tired of it, man. But, you know, we're not, at the end of the day, this is the Lord's punishment. You know, we're being taught. Hold up. Let me, let me get this real quick. This is, uh, I'm going to start with this scripture. You know, this is um, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 31. It says, for if we if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You know, so when we go into things at the end of the day, we got to think about, you know, at least we're not being condemned with the world. It's best it's best that the Lord teach us these lessons now and purify us now, you know, and we and we hearken into it. Then then us lead into destruction, man. The Lord is leading us to the, the, the green pastures as we take heed to this these lessons, but he has to correct us. You know? The whole reason why we understand we're being corrected. You know, some people can get some buildings can get renovated, but others have to be completely destroyed, man. You know? So we we being chastened of the Lord and and, and and hey, so that he can have joy of us in the end. The scripture said. You know, let me let me get that. Bear with me. It's in Proverbs. Um, this is not it exactly, you know, but I'll get it. This is a uh, Proverbs thirteen verse twenty four. It says, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. You know, meaning early. You see? So you, because the way the scripture say, train ye up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart, man. You know? And so the, the Lord is he's getting beaten to the time of our youth, <laughs> as the scripture say, man. Let me see. 24. Let me make sure that's the right one. Yeah, that was it. Um, let me see if I can find it. One second. Oh, this is uh, Proverbs 19 and 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope and let thy soul and let not thy soul spare for his crying. And see, the Lord, he's a, he don't think the way we think, man. Our minds are not like the Lord's mind. You know? His ways are higher than our ways, man. So he chasten us. But while there's still hope, you know, we, we it's a good thing at the end of the day that we're going through the things that we're going through, man. You know? Because what? The scriptures say the rod of correction drive <laughs> away that foolishness, man. That's in our heart. And we could be foolish, man. You know, we in the flesh. We do certain things. We so even following your own will, following your own mind. And the Lord, what, beats you and puts you back in line. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Sometimes the punishment is, is not as uh, dragged out. Not as long as you want. But the Lord has all days and times numbered, man. You know? He's humbling us, man. Keeping us in line. 
And so that's a good thing. So that we don't be judged with the world. This is Proverbs uh, 23. I think I read. I read 13. Hold up. One second here. Toggling. Yeah. This is, um, and this is, the Lord is instructing us, right? This is Proverbs 23, verse 12. It says, applying thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from thy child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Because you, because, hey, you going astray, you going in the wrong direction, and then you get corrected, man. You know, just look up that word correction, man. I'm going to the etymology. Um, it says uh, from mid 14th century, Corazion. It says, if I'm saying that correctly, authority to correct, action of correcting or chastising, re. Rectific rectification of faults. You see that? Rectification of faults in character and conduct, etc. By restraints or punishments. So, damn, you, you may think, damn, some of these, my, a lot of my freedoms is being taken away. Yeah, we don't like it, man. Some of these restrictions that we have in this world, but it's, it, it, it's, it's what? Mortifying us, you know? It says, uh, it says, uh, also bringing into conformity to a standard, a model, or original. This is us being made in the image of the of the Lord, man. And it's gonna come in the, in, in, the, in, in the form of correction, rebuke, punishments. You know. Hold up. Texting the bro back before we had. You know, but that's what this thing is about. This is amended. We're amending our ways, man. And the Lord is doing that through correcting us, man. Oh, man. When you go to the, bo the bottom, it says meaning an instance of correction. That which is proposed or substituted for what is wrong. Because guess what? We worthy of death, man. At least we ain't dead. The Lord is correcting us. Now, let me go to Hebrews 12. Oh, hold up. House of correct. It says is it's from 1520s. A house of correction. House, house of correction, place of confinement, intended to be reformatory for those convicted of minor offenses and is not and not considered as belonging to the professional criminal class. But but look, it's intended. See everything they say, they took it and twisted it, man. But the Lord is actually doing it to reform us, man. So it's good because we are woken to it and we're going through the training, the discipleship of the Lord to save us, man. At the end of the day, no matter what we got to go through, man, got a couple of scriptures. Um, Hebrews 12, verse five, it says, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. When you go through it, sometimes you kind of forget, man, you know. Then uh, then you heart, uh, maybe a brother may bring it up, you know, you maybe you watch a video, you know, maybe you read it. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit give you understanding about the, the, the situations you're going through. It says, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked to him. Don't just give up when you get rebuked, man. You know, show yourself a man. You know, when you're going through it. And we, man, we have great examples, man. You know, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he, he received, all of us. You know, because all of us fell short of the glory of the Lord. So we have to be reformed. You know, if you endure chastising, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. Because if you don't endure it, that means you wasn't one of his, man. <laughs> you, you couldn't withstand the, 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 uh, the chastening of the Lord. You know, um, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if thou be without chastisements, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So all of the little sons are going to take partake in chastisements. If you don't, then you're a bastard. 
So the Lord's not sitting up here teaching you the, his will and how he wants you to be. Teaching you to be perfect. So that's why they, a lot of these people are going to be destroyed, man. But here it is. We're being taught. And when we when we and when we going astray, he correct us. He push pushing us back, man, in the right way, pointing us in the right direction. No matter how it feels, okay. It says, um, where am I? Verse nine. It says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. It's for our profit at the end of the day, man. So that's why we should be happy about it. Not that it's going to feel good when you're going through it. You know, right? It's going to say it. Now, no chastening. Hold up. Now, I'll read that verse 10 again. For, ver for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. See, like I said, being made holy. To being set apart. Perfect. The Lord is setting that standard for us, man. And when we're not living up to it, he's putting us through that proper training, that proper correction. It says that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Meaning the exercise, meaning you got to do it. You got to go through it. So he's exercising. We, we, we going through it, man. We we actually doing this thing, man. You know? Now, I got a couple in Job. What was that one, though? Dang, I cannot remember that one I had. That sucks. Let me see. Well, I'll get this one first. This is Job 5. Hold up. Maybe it's right here. Nah. Dang. Never mind. This is Job 5 and verse um, 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore, this is what you see on the screen, and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. So it's actually the Lord that's doing these things. When we're going through these situations, we got to remember and have faith and accept that the Lord is the one putting us through this, man. You know, and we just, we, we pan for our, you know, sins now. So, so we're not being judged with the world. And we learning lessons, man, so that we can know how to please him, man. You know, but it's the Lord, the one that's doing these things. He, he maketh us sore. You know, he's, he's allowing it. You know, but he's also binding us up, binding up our wounds. He's making us whole, perfect. You see, so at that evil day, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be able to be changed because we get we endured the chastening, and we became what in the, in the, the eyes of the Lord perfect man. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yeah, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. And famine, he sh shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Because what? We redeemed the times. We did what was, what was uh, necessary. We conformed to his image. Not the image of the world, but his image. You know? Let me see if I can get that other one. And Job. Damn. Nah. I can't remember that one. It's all good. Ah. Oh, damn. Let me go to, um, cause it was, a, you know, I was talking, me and the brother was on the phone and we read it, you know, but it's all good. I didn't write that one down. It's all good. Um, this is Job 34 in verse, um, let me see. Do I want to start? Yes, this is Job 34, verse 31. It says, Surely it is meet to be said unto the Most High, I have borne chastisement. I will offend. I will not offend anymore. That which I see not teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. So the Lord is bringing it to your attention that you was going off and you were made aware of it. A lot of these people are not aware of it, man. And they just compounding sin upon sin, man. 
You know, they just going further and further and further into the deep end. You see, because they're not going through the chastening of the Lord. He's not teaching them. They're bastards. You know, you, you see these guys. It's all these statistics about. Uh, uh, it was a uh, I was watching a video a statistic. You know, when a father is in the house or well, there's a two parent household, then the, the child is less likely to go to jail. But guess what? That same statistic is, 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 is quite similar in just a father led household, man. Because you you instilling that fear, it drives away sins, man, and iniquity. You know, you get, but it's, it's, it's a balance. But you, you need, they need the roughness, they need the fear, they need to learn the no respect. You know, because you're not going to get far if not. You know. Uh, let me get this one. This is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go. I think this was it. Um, I think this was it. One second. Okay, nah, this a, this isn't it, but um, I'm gonna just get straight to it. Oh yeah, well I did read this one. This is uh Job 33 verse 24 says, Then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. You know. Um, now, nah, Salaki, let me start at 27. It says, he looketh upon men. And if any say, this is Job 33, verse 27. He looketh upon men. And if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right and, and it profited me not. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. So at least you're able to see the light a life, man. You know, we able to see the the, the 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 right way, the way of the Lord. You know, so through the Lord's chastisement and correction, you are able to see that. You know, it says, "Lo, all these things work of the Most High, oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living." So the Lord often He puts us through situations like like He said. You know, all men is going to be uh, partakers of this, man. Child testing. And we getting put into different situations to purify us, man. To become as gold. We're getting that dross, all that stuff, the impurities out of us through chastisements, man. And we have to be patient through them. And we should be happy about it. Because, hey, hey, we, we able to live, man. You see? This is, uh, hey, that's why Paul had that. That um that uh thorn in his flesh, and he said twice, unless he should be exalted above measure, he had a thorn in his flesh. So it's, it, it can be keeping you back from something, you see. But um, let me see. Do I want anything else? I'm gonna grab two more, and that's and I close. In Psalms, um, this is Psalm nine uh, ninety four verse twelve. It says, "Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth." O Yahweh, and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. You know, so he's teaching us out of his law. That's what the Lord is doing. You know, so now we know what's right, what's wrong. You know, so we can have rest <laughs> from the days of adversity. See, when the real trouble happens, this is when they're going to feel it. We're going to be laughing, you know. You know, it says until that pit be dead for the wicked, you know, and I'm going to close on this one. Um, this is Psalm 118 and 18. It says, Yahweh have chastened me sore, but he have not given me over unto death. You see, at the end of the day, you, you, you're you not resisted in the blood, man. 
He is he hasn't given you over to death. So no matter what you're going through, it's better than that. Because we guess what? We still have a chance to be one of the Lords. And it's a lot of things that come with that, man. And the Lord's will get into that in another lesson. So, you know, with that for now, until the next lesson, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Till next one, I want to say Shalom.